Hey everybody, welcome back to X-Plane 11. I am Bill and today I've got another fantastic freeware plane to share with you guys. This is the Dassault Dornier Alpha Jet and it's developed by a company out of France called XPFR. So this is a, a French-German joint uh, trainer light attack aircraft um, developed for X-Plane 11 by a French company. So pretty much all the materials are in French and I don't speak French. So uh, this has been a little bit difficult learning this plane. Um, but luckily it is a freeware plane, which means um, for better or worse, it is simplified. So it, it's not too bad. Um, before we get into the plane, thank you guys again for watching the video. And uh, for those of you that have subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. Uh, definitely means a lot to me. We're trying to hit that thousand mark. So if you're you're watching and you enjoy the, the videos, definitely give me a subscribe and we'll hit that thousand mark. Um, we got links in the description as well. I'll put the link for the download for the AlphaJet in there. Um, and there's some links as well to my Twitch page where you can watch and join us live flying, flying around on Pilot Edge, as well as uh, the newly established Patreon page to hopefully try to get um, a little project off the ground, pun maybe intended. So, okay, thank you guys again for watching and subscribing and all that. So let's get into this cool little Alpha Jet. So we're at John Wayne and we're gonna ferry this plane to Edwards Air Force Base in the high desert, which is not a very far flight. Um, but it's made a little bit more complicated due to the fact that the Alpha Jet does not have any GPS. Um, no, that is to say, this this plane, the the download does not have any integrated GPS into it. So we'll have to use the the VOR, uh, Palmdale VOR, to get there. So again, it's a freeware plane and it looks fantastic. The reason I, I wanted to download this plane or why I was originally looking for something like this is I wanted a military style jet that wasn't the L-36 and was not the the default X-Plane 11 F-4. So this kind of was, you know, this seemed like a, a good plane to, to try out. Obviously it's free, so there's no harm in doing that, but it also looked really nice and it was kind of unique. It was not a plane that I was familiar with before, um, but learning a little bit about it, it has, um, you know, not, not too crazy of a history, but it, it was a joint venture by the French and German uh, companies Dassault and Dornier. So they jointly developed and jointly produced this plane. Um, they made just under 500 of them, 480, and the the primary use for this was a trainer, um, but it was also used as a, a light attack plane as well. It is actually still being used in a few countries as, uh, or in their air force, some smaller countries, uh, Belgium, Egypt, um, still use them as, uh, as part of their air force. Um, the French also uses them as a uh, display team as well. So kind of just like a, a smaller version of the Blue Angels. And this download actually, the um, XPFR download does have that livery, which we can check out once we finish this ferry flight. But right now we're going with the French Air Force livery, which I think looks really cool. So the outside looks nice. Uh, the inside looks pretty good as well. For a freeware plane, um, really no complaints too much. Uh, you know, it's it's a military aircraft, so there's um, a lot of metal, which in places looks pretty flat, and you know, and it's it's not payware quality. It's not a payware plane, but for you know what you're going to be really looking at most of the time, which is kind of here and up, it looks really really nice. I would say far better than just. Uh, serviceable. So, like I said, most of the stuff is in French. Um, I mean, secure arms, we could guess what that means. Um, but some of this stuff, I just have, you know, no idea what most of this, this means. But it's okay, because we can get by with just flicking some buttons, because there really isn't too much uh, functionality within the plane itself. So 
Um, that's kind of what I meant by for better or worse. It is a very simple plane, um, but it still kind of works. And it starts up essentially at the touch of a button. So that's that's really it. And now we're we're going. I think it looks pretty cool with the the canopy canopy up as well. Okay, so heads up display. It's kind of hard to read, but it is there, and it is you know as accurate as it can be. Let's lower this as well. Take a look at it with that closed. It's a cool looking jet for sure. And since the uh, the French and German air forces retired them, they did sell them to, like I said, a few you know smaller air forces, but also privately. So there there are a handful of these in private hands. And this this would be a pretty cool private ex military jet to fly around. Okay, so now let's. Before we take off, I want to make sure that we can get our VOR in here. So this is not on. How do we get that on? <laughs> this is really flat. Can it be okay? It's the anti-icing. Um, I wonder why those aren't turning on. Avionics, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so here's nav. So let's do nav, and we're at 114.5. So 114.5. That in there, and once we get up in the air, we'll just we'll fly to that frequency, assuming that it is for this one and not this guy. That's the heading bug. Okay, that works both of them. Okay, cool. All right, so let's taxi down to. There we go. Taxi down to two zero right via Bravo. Sounds pretty good. Tower cam. Yeah, some payware aircraft really, really fall down in the sound department, but this this does sound pretty cool. And looks kind of mean straight on, too. Let's get on this taxi line here. Yeah, no joke, that sounds really cool. It has kind of like a like pretty old FSX feel to it with some of the the flattened gauges here and some of the kind of low res pixelated you know they're they're trying here but this still looks a little PlayStation 1-ish a little bit and up here it's I mean I would like to see these removed because they're they're so kind of blatantly low fidelity that uh, if they're not going to have any function to them, you, you can probably just do away with them. But other than that, it's it's really not not too bad. You know, the the stick has a little wobble to it, which is pretty cool. You know, the the instruments do work even if you can't manipulate much of the the dash here. So here we got we got speed down here. We've got it up here as well. 
we got. That altimeter looks way off. Vertical speed is up here. We got the clock. And our engine engine instruments over here. So the top speed of this thing is under 500 knots. So it is it's subsonic by quite a bit. Um, but it'll get going quick. It gets up to that 500 knots really quick. And it will climb nicely as well. So let's... Let's try a first notch of flaps for takeoff here. Should be good. We're at full fuel. So to give you an idea of kind of the payload that we've got here, let me show you in the fuel weight and balance. So here's fuel maxed out and we're at at half. So that's you know, you can you can add a bunch of uh bombs and missiles and all that kind of stuff in here. So this is fully, fully loadable, um, but I want to keep this a little bit, a little bit light for takeoff and landing. All right, so let's get the takeoff here. Clear to the left. Clear to the right. Got 1,500 feet of runway here. Should be enough, so there is full power. Everything spools up nicely. Sounds really cool. And let's rotate. Brakes. Doesn't do anything. Gear up. That's pretty good. For a freeware plane, that is pretty pretty nice animation. Okay, so let's make a turn to 330 is going to be our departure heading. we got to keep it below 250 until we get above 10,000 feet. to SoCal Departure. We, of course, overshot our heading. That's right. All right, so let's, let's get a special clearance up and out of here. So let's go full power. See what kind of climb rate we can get here. So we already have the vertical speed totally pegged. Love that. Sixty five hundred. Yeah, it's climbing real nice. This is definitely the, the cool part about a jet and something that I was looking to do we, you know, without having it be a modern U.S. military plane. This is at least somewhat conceivable in a private setting. Obviously, this is pretty unobtainium. Um, I, mean, I can only imagine what the, the operation costs are on this thing, but at least it, you know... If you've got the money, you could potentially buy one of these and fly them around. So it's not crazy to think that, you know, it could be flown in this capacity. But you're definitely not going to be going to Edwards Air Force Base. Okay, so we've stopped 
accelerating at 180 going up. So let's bring the nose down. Let it come down and see what happens with the airspeed. There's 15,000 right there. Coming down, there's 200 knots. So it'll climb. I mean, it'll do a pretty nice climb, but it is not a F-18. It cannot just go straight vertical. Beautiful LA base in there. And the even more beautiful Inland Empire. Most annoying freeway in the world. The 91. Ugh. All right, let's see if we can get this thing lined up. Oop, almost had it. 3302. So let's get on to 330. That'll take us right to the Palmdale VOR. Actually, it's a Vortec. Palmdale Vortec, and then we can we'll be able to see Edwards from there. And we've got a ton of runway space to land at. I only have a few landings in this plane. Whoa. Try that again, maybe not straight on. Pretty good. You know, I just realized I still had the flaps up. Who else caught that? That's why I was freaking stalled out. Now we're moving. Real snappy. Yeah, that's that's some nice maneuverability there. Mistake. Leaving the flaps down. Just 20,000 feet pretty quick. Alright, well now that we've got this newfound speed and performance, let's see what it will do. Vertical. <laughs> Pretty vertical right there. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome. How's our speed looking? We're going to stall. Okay, so it will not climb vertically. Just let it go into a flat spin. Okay, that's good to know. Let's get the nose pointed down, get some air into the wings. Full power. Yeah, that really, that really died on us there. But it recovered nicely, you just get the nose pointed down, so that was good. And back up to 450. A little bit off course. I think that is Edwards right in front of us. That lake bed right out here. We'll try to track our attack. Lovely 
lovely, lovely ortho. If you get X-Plane 11, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta get the ortho set up for the area that you fly in most. Oh my god, it's amazing. Okay, that like bed is not Edwards. Is that like bed? Yep. There's Edwards over there. So we have a visual on the base. Now there is a back seat to this, and I was thinking about setting up a view back here, and did not because it looks like this. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little rough. But from the outside, it looks it looks fine. Tell why the uh, French Air Force uses this as a demo, a demo plane, because it is super snappy, but not like overly, overly snappy. Yeah, you can. So the other cool thing about high performance jet is that if you need to lose altitude, you can lose some serious altitude. Space made again. Okay, a little bit to the left there. So the stall speed on this thing is actually 90, which is like 30 knots faster than the maximum speed you'd ever want to touch down in any of the planes that I fly. So. We're going to use the long runway there, this guy right there, and that is four right, I believe. Nice big old approach. Let's check our airport height here, elevation 2300, what are we at now? 7,400.
get the gear down. Lovely. First notch of flaps coming in also. Trimmed nice for 200. And I couldn't I couldn't find the actual approach speed. So if it's stalling at 90, I'm going to kind of use, I mean, I don't know, like 120 maybe. We'll see how it responds to that, that speed. Let's notch your flaps in there. up here we're still pretty pretty dang high lower the nose a little bit pull the power back that's about 150 ish maybe a little bit more 160 there's our runway altitude is coming down well, this thing is steady as a rock right now. Nice, stable. Still very high. But we're coming, coming up to pattern altitude. We're about a mile away, maybe a mile or two away. There is pattern altitude, so we should be coming up on a glide slope. Let's get final notch of flaps. We're holding right at about 130. There's Slide slope a little bit, nose down. Let's trim it back up a little bit. Now we're low. But now <laughs> this thing is trimmed, nose down. All right, so maybe maybe 120 is a little bit slow. Now we're left. This was going so well. Kind of stuck at that 120 now. Okay, let's get it back on. Back on the runway. Actually, really don't know what the winds are doing. We might be. Might be flying into. Crosswind here, which looks like we're at. So 120, we got a little crosswind crab going. See if we can get close to that center line. Just coming down at 120, not touching the throttle at all. Ooh. Oh, that nose is really low to the ground. What is that? Is that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that looks so weird. Okay, let's get this thing slowed down. And let's pull off to the side here, I guess. Let's debrief that landing. It was way out of trim. Sounds good though. Sounds good. It's relatively stable. 
those movements that it's making are definitely all me. A good nose up attitude there. Here I was going to come back onto the center line. Definitely got some weird winds going here. Big time nose up. Then it just kind of dropped and then bounced on <laughs> this. Ooh. Yeah, that was really bouncy. I kind of let the nose just slam down. That was not ideal, but it was okay. That wasn't that wasn't too bad. And now let's check out the PAF livery. Yes. All right, that's pretty sweet. That is really really cool. All right, let's do let's do one more pattern in this, and we're just going to take off right from here because this runway just kind of continues on to the lake bed. Yeah, that that livery is money right there. Gear up. Of course, since we're a demo team, we're gonna the gear up as we're doing a maneuver. Oh, that shadow looks cool. Yeah, this this thing is sweet. Permission to buzz the tower. Sweet. Yeah, this this thing is Super bitching in that livery. Okay, let's do the RC plane view loop. Back, and let's hope we're not looking at the ground. Major G's. All right, that was sweet. Okay, so everything that I said previously, I totally left out the aerobatic portion of this plane because holy crap, this is, in this livery, with those capabilities, that is super fun. Alright, now let's, let's come back and land on the shorter runway and get the nose trimmed way up. Coming a little bit quick. We're gonna drop drop the gear mid-turn, and we're gonna get flaps mid-turn because, of course, we are professionals and a military aerobatics team. So that's what I'm going to. That's what I'm gonna go with. Even though we are 1,500 feet above 
the runway and almost there. Not a typical approach. See if it matters. And we're going to use that 180. Okay, so we got flaps down, we've got three green. There's 160. But we might salvage this a little bit. It's not like we don't have enough room. A little bit left of center. Nose is not going to be as pitched up this time. Ooh, that thing just kind of pendulums down. That's a little messy. All right, so there's work to be done in the landings, which is a motivation. <laughs> I got to tell you, like if this thing just landed super easy, you know, you just kind of like, yeah, it's you know, fun plane to fly, pretty easy. But the fact that I'm screwing these landings up kind of makes me want to fly this again and maybe hit the brakes a little bit sooner let's get out of here definitely not doing this by the books but sometimes that's what you got to do in a flight sim you got to have some fun Park in the middle of a taxiway. Yeah, that's awesome. What a cool plane. What a super cool plane. I love it. So link is in the description, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this was a little bit goofier than normal, but I really like this plane and wanted to share it with you. Um, a good freeware plane I feel like needs its its proper due because these planes take a lot to develop and some of these companies that are you know companies and individuals I mean a lot of time it's just an individual that are willing to you know basically donate their time to the community I think they need to be highlighted and you know shown off a little bit because this plane is pretty sweet all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, if you like the content, and all the pertinent links are going to be in the description, so check those out if you want to continue on this adventure with me, um, which I hope you do. So thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.